has rapid urbanization how to develop in developing countries. Um, um, in Margaret Thatcher's speech to the United Nations General Assembly, she discusses the world and, and how it's going on a negative path, like how quickly they're removing trees and how it's really bad for the uh, atmosphere. Um, and then in Mark R. Montgomery's um, article, Urbanization of the Developing World, it discusses how urbanization is affecting places like um, Asia and Africa. And um, another piece of context would be the difference in how people, how fast people are urbanizing. Like in America, we're 80% urban, that's from the Washington Post, and India is 31.16% urban. And but the, the main difference there is that America is not urban, urbanizing as fast as India is because in 2001 uh, there was a census and they were at 28.63% uh, and in 2011 they got to 31.16% um, urban. Uh, historical. So this is for the United States and when people first came to Jamestown in uh, 1607 they had to stay in a really small area because there weren't cars and trains and things to get around. And um, that kept going forward as, people, as they moved farther into the country and um, started building more and more towns and cities and things. And then when the Industrial Revolution started in 1790, almost 200 years later, they still kept things really, really close. And um, that's also because there still wasn't cars and trains that this happened around like Eighteen five. Um. Um. Like. Uh, sorry. Um. They force people. Ooh, why was it too bad? So, okay. Sorry. Um. They force people to be really, really close again after industrialization because they couldn't get around and everything was where it needed to be for the general public. Okay, that's good. Um, the first people came to India more than um, a million years ago and that sparks the question of why aren't they as developed as parts of a, other parts of the world? Well, Ajati Ghosh, a professor from Jawaharlal Nehru University in New Delhi, answered this question by saying, the development project in India is nowhere near complete. It has barely begun. It's still a poor country where capital remains below $2,000 at exchange rates. This is still widespread destitution. Development is supposed to involve job creation with more workers in formal, in formal employment um, in large units, but that's not happening. Manufacturing still counts for less than one-fifth of all um, outports and employment and half and uh, more than half of our workers languish in productive in um, low productivity agriculture while the other quarter or so in low grade services about 95 percent of workers are in informal employment roughly half are self-employed what's more the recognized part of participation in women working has actually been declining in a period of rapid income growth what this means is that the whole of India is capable of developing and is trying to, but because of the lack of jobs being created and um, people aren't self-employed um, and there's no major manufacturing happening, they are stuck and they aren't going to advance until they can get more jobs and more manufacturing. Um, environmental. The environmental impacts of rapid urbanization are, um, as listed there, there are water pollution and air pollution. Um, waste is a major problem in large cities because people aren't using just what they need, they're taking away more in. Um, air pollution results from over-dependence over on motorized transport and the burning of coal to supply energy because if you go to a city, the lights are always on and it's never given a break, so energy plants are always running and running and running. Water pollution results from the sewer facilities and disposal of heavy metals into waterways because there are so many people and the water's running and like the toilets running example they kept they kept they keep running and they keep using water and it's
discussing with the sewage facilities and then solid, vast quantities of solid waste are produced and traffic congestion and noise air pollution are major environmental impacts of large cities and all this trash is going to dumps and they aren't really being dealt with because you can't get rid of plastic very fast and it takes thousands, I think, I think a thousand years to decompose completely, but if we haven't had time to even see that. Um, my futuristic, so um, in Mark R. Montgomery's article, he says, by 2050, fully two thirds of their inhabitants are likely to live in urban areas. And he's talking about Asia and Africa and how they're moving on and going forward. And then um, in The Guardian, they said, there will be, a, like, talking about population, there will be a barn global catastrophe to be far more people on Earth today. 50 years ago, the world population was below 3 billion. It has more than doubled since then to 6.7 billion. The percentage growth rate has slowed, but it's projected to reach 9 billion by 2015. And the world just can't sustain that because people are taking in way, way more than what they need. And especially with energy consumption, people are constantly leaving lights on and letting things run and overusing what is available. And then my conclusion is um, to a solution for the environment problems are three R's, which is reduce, reuse, recycle, which has been ingrained into elementary stuff. Um, and then reducing use electricity and water, which are all things people know, but to have actually implemented would benefit the environment society greatly. And then for the futures, keeping people educated, giving opportunities where they can be given, like letting people know that there is more going on than just what's around them in their small communities and that um, keeping educated should be like schools allowing people to know like what's actually going on and not just focusing on, again, their small bubble and what's, act, what's like popular and Okay, Lily, uh, two questions for you. How valid and reliable are the sources you've used? How do you know, and which sources didn't work? Um, my sources are pretty reliable because they are from places that focus on those topics mostly, like the garden focuses on world issues and things like that, and they're always being edited and like updated by people who work there. Um, the thing that didn't work was I was trying to find numbers and oh, for the census and I the first one that popped up was from this propaganda-esque website and that just wasn't gonna fit. Okay thank you and then your second one is what advice would you have for other researchers who consider this topic? Um, look into more than just developed like don't just look at them for developed and then developing because they and come together and I should have pushed them together more than what I did. Okay, thank you.